Good evening. On behalf of the Biodiversity Series 2 Webinar Committee, I welcome all of you. As you know, every Saturday evening, we are trying to organize webinars on biodiversity and environment and development. Now, this is our second series. We have been successfully completed our first series and then conducted one national level conference. Now, after completion of series two webinars, we will conduct one international conference on environment and development. Interested participants, please go through the brochure available in Telegram and WhatsApp group. Now again, I welcome all of you and our today's resource person, Dr. Boishali M. Banshad. I would like to request Dr. Dash, Associate Professor of Botany and uh, Organizing Secretary of this webinar to introduce today's resource person. So, Dr. Dash, I am handing over this mic to you. Thank you, ma'am. Today's speaker is Dr. Boisali M. Bangso. Madam is head of the department of Zoology, PDEA, Baburavji, Golab College, New Sangbi, Pune. Madam, 27 years experience in service, guided two PhD students, completed one minor research project, and got Best Teachers Award in the year 2019. Conference attended 20. Her publication is 14 in different international journals. Chapters in the referred book, particularly biodiversity conservation, strategies and applications, uh, one, one, one uh, paper. So, uh, much more. Without losing time, I would request uh, Madam to start your presentation before the audience. <laughs> Madam? Yes, sir. You all can hear me, sir? You can hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Thank you for the introduction, Dr. Das, sir. Thank you. It's my privilege to be a resource person here in Biodiversity Series 2, organized by Flora and Fauna Asia Facebook group, Department of Botany, Seva Bharti Mahavidyalay, in collaboration with Drishti Organization. I thank Dr. Taft to show his confidence in me for uh, to be as a resource person. I'll be presenting, I'll just open this. Just let me know whether you can see the slide. Yes, madam. Okay. Just a full view. Go to full view. What? Yeah, yeah. better. Yeah, I will start it. Just let me know whether it is full screen so that I can start then. Yes. yes. Continue. Continue. Okay. Yeah. So in Biodiversity Series 2, Flora and Fauna Asia Facebook group, Department of Botany, Seva Bharti Mahavidyalaya Chargam and Dishtikon Organization, I am presenting commonly fine mites in poultry. However, I will be also talking about the different type of the mites because the, it has a varied habitat. So apart from the poultry, I'll be taking the other mice also. Now to start from the scratch, what are the mice? There are many people who still do not understand, even for the 
for that matter, even the life sciences persons, they do not know exactly where the mites are, where do they stand. So they are put in vertebrates belonging to phylum arthropoda. Now the, in arthropoda, we have many different classes, out of which you have one, main, uh, one class, which is arachnida. So these mites, if you go for the taxonomy of these mites, it belongs to the class arachnida. Now arachnida is the same group where you have the um, animals, those are spiders and the scorpions. So the mites also belong to the same group, that which is arachnida. It is a class of phylum uh, arthropoda. The main characters, why we are putting these mites in this is that there are four types of walking appendages. Spiders and scorpions being uh, the famous example, we all know that. Now, the mice, there are more than 48,000 species. We still have to discover many of the species, especially the soil mites. And e every day I'm getting a paper that any one mite has been discovered. Now, recently again, Tapal strategy um, from West Bengal in association with the South Korean University, they have just discovered one of the mites. Now, mites, they have a varied habitat and has a wide range of ecological niche. They're found everywhere. They're found in the soil. They're found in the brackish water, that is the estuarine water, on plants, pastures, agricultural crops, even the ornamental plants. They are also parasites on almost all the vertebrates and invertebrate animals also, including the insects. We have the birds. And including man, these mites are the set zone. They are found even in the thermal springs, where they have a big high temperature. There also these mites are found. Now they feed on the animals, they feed on plants, on fungi, and some of them are also parasites on the plants and animals. And they are mainly decomposers. They are also found to be decomposers. Now, previously, these mites were thought to be inhabitants only in temperate regions. And we do have many of these mites still being discovered in these temperate regions. But then, the recent studies of the 70s and 80s showed that even India has revealed that they have, there are equal number of the mites found in the tropical countries also. Now, they have now been established as a cosmopolitan in appearance and distributed all over the world. Uh, mites have been reported even underneath the snow in Africa and also for the terrestrial in aquatic uh, region, in aquatic habitat, both freshwater as well as marine. They can also be parasitic in the same region. Now, these mites are also considered to be detritus. They have usually found to be the prey and predator mites that brings about the recycling of the organic materials as decomposers in deep status environment and ecosystem, be it forest ecosystem or land ecosystem, or for that matter, even the water ecosystem. Now, many of the people, there are also, many of the scientists are also working on but for a million man, even for that matter, many of the uh, academicians from different backgrounds, of course, they still do not know what exactly is the mite and tick, whether it mite and tick are the same. If you see uh, the images, the previous image and this image, they look like. But the main difference is that the tick are larger in size as compared to the mites. The mites can be very, very minute very tiny. Of course, you can have the bigger size mites also, but then ticks are still larger. In case of the mites, however, the hairs are not present, and even if these bristles are present, they are very, very short. We call it as sleeping. And these ticks are parasites only on animals. They are about one man in size when you see them in their uh, habitat. It is usually uh, found on the animals and feed on the blood of these animals. They are, they are always associated with any of the animals. 
they feed on the blood and they expand to about three centimeter in length after feeding. Highly elastic uh, body. It can remain attached body of the host. Can be any vertebrate animal, and it remain. It keeps. I'll just show uh, the mouth part of the tip. It remains embedded deep into the skin. Only the outer part of the body, the the main uh, thorax of the body, can be seen. And the rest of this mouth part is embedded in, inside the skin, and it will remain on the body of the host for many days. And it can also survive for many years, also for several years, even without food. They are always in search of any of the opportunistic host. Now, when we come to the mites, what are the characters of the mites? Now the color of the mud is very light, very translucent white. You cannot even see these mites in that clear background. To white in color, to reddish brown in color, to pale yellow in color, to paleish in color, and even brown mites can be seen. I will show you this other slide also where you have array of colors of these mites. Now they are usually round or globular. Oval in shape, oblong in shape, ovoid in shape, roughly triangular in shape also. All these mites, whatever be the habitat, they have the similar body structure, body parts. The body is divided into bathosoma and idiosoma. The bathosoma you can see over here is the anterior region. Why we are calling it as bathosoma? It is because only the mouth parts are present over here. The brain, the head part is not present. So you have only bathosoma or the I will just use this pen. This portion. Is what is the gnathosoma, and the other rest part of the body is what we call it as the idiosoma. Only the mouth part structure is present. We will see what uh, are the other mouth structures. The region of the oral opening is the gnathosoma. Now this gnathosoma has pedipalps, and it helps in taking in the food material. It is set off from the left. Portion of the main body. The mouth parts differ depending upon where, what exactly is the food and the feeding habit, where it is present. The pedipalps and the chelicerae remain same, but the there is a structural variations of these chelicerae and pedipalps. So it depends upon the diet on which it is feeding. In some of the species, it also resembles to that of the first pair of walking legs, and in some of the cases, it is highly modified, and it forms a chelicerae and the pedipalp. The idiosoma is the main body structure. This is the this is the gnathosoma part, and this is the idiosoma, the full body. Idiosoma again is divided into. Two parts. The first, the first portion where you have first two pairs of the walking appendages. This is what is called as a prosoma, and the rest of the portion is what we call it as the metapodosoma. Now, in case of this, the last portion. Where you have no pair of walking appendages, we call it as the opisthosoma. And the setae that are present are hypertrophic setae-like structure, and they are called as the rutella. And these rutella will help in cutting the organic matter. Now, my question is. We have domestic mice. Domestic mice that is found in house 
all in the residential area they are free living and they are having two ecological groups one which we call it as housed as mice and the other what we call it as the storage mice housed as mice found in the poultry dust are also the allergens because it causes allergy in the sensitive individuals why we go for the detailed structures of the hdm it is because that they are found to be allergens in the sensitive individuals some of them have also been found to cause diseases in the poultry birds and poultry workers also and thereby it creates a very ecological imbalance in the nature moreover it also results in the aerobio pollution problems now some of these mites because they are very tiny they are only in micrometer but from this also you have many of them are so tiny and so light in weight that they remain suspended in the air and it forms therefore therefore the study of mites is also an exclusive part of aerobiology they generally are on the floor or on any surface matter or any substrate until disturbed but when they disturbed they rise up into the air and they it remains suspended in the breeze from 30 minutes to 2 hours and it takes that much amount of time for them to settle back down out from the air dust mites they usually require the humid climate now the poultry workers exposure to poultry dust is substantial so these are the workers occupational respiratory diseases they develop they develop permanent breathing problems they are unable to work and it not only affects the individual working in the poultry but also the poultry birds and it has seen that it has also affects the growth of the birds and also the laying of the eggs the people living people working and even for that matter living nearby the poultry houses breathe in many different type of the airborne particles which took the up of is the poultry dust now the activities that create the airborne mites are by spreading of the straw by wood shaving by hand placing out the trays of the chicks then transferring of the hens into cages moving the hens from one room to another and even ruffling of the feathers and other activities of the poultry birds india ranks about fourth in egg production uh, poultry egg production and ranks about fifth in meat production in the world poultry scenario now we have seen there is an increasing incidence of a number of diseases in poultry which has been associated with the ingestion of the contaminated feed with the biological active compound derived from the metabolic product of the mold contaminants hence it is essential to undertake the dust and the air monitoring in the poultry shed also poultry houses provide a very nice environment for the dust mites mice have been for over 50 years to be one of the causes of the human allergic disorders now joke in 1996 on the some of the external mites also like pig mites bird mites chicken mites pigeon mites fowl mites for that matter even groundnut mite might have migrated in the intramural environment ecosystem that means these are the mice that are present usually on these animals but then they have migrated inside making them intramural ecosystem and have been inhabited these habitat in the intramural ecosystem now mounting of the mice whenever we go for any of the specimen we pick it from the petri plate the dust is kept in the petri plate a petri dish and then it is seen under the dissecting binocular microscope and then they are picked up with the help of the needle it is then it is picked up with the help of the needle and kept it in the lactic acid now 
they do not usually how do we pick up with the help of the needle is that the needle first must be dipped into the lactic acid and then we just touch the moving white found in the peptide or in the tap and keep it in the lactic acid in the cavity block all other parts now here also we have depending upon what ex where exactly what exactly is habitat of the mice now the mice that is present in the semi arid region where jogdan sir has done extensive studies on this in aurangabad region that is we consider that as a semi arid region and the mice that is been studied in pune region we have little bit differentiation in the climatic condition so the mice present in the semi arid region they usually have a tougher cuticle but the mice present in this area where you have high humidity the cuticle is very soft so in case so even when you go for picking up the mice just see to it that if it is having the hardened cuticle then you have to keep it in the lactic acid overnight and next day you prepare a slide but if the mice itself is very soft then immediately you can go for the mounting of the specimen now what lactic acid does is that first of all it parasitizes the mite and secondly it keeps the uh, cuticle clean so that the other body structures can be easily seen after this you put a melted crystal gel with how that it is made and then put a cover slip over it remove the excess jelly from it and then see it under the microscope now the gelatin jelly is a mixture we prepare it in the lab only it is a mixture of gelatin glycerin and phenol crystals in it you make this preparation keep it in the bottle it becomes a jelly like structure and whenever you uh, whenever we are making a slide just heat it so that it melts and then take a drop and put it on the slide so you can make a large quantity of the glycerin jelly and you can use it uh, whole year Make number of slides. This is one method of how we are going to see the taxonomy or what might we are going to study. You have another method which is called as the flotation technique. This technique is we usually done to for the qualitative analysis of the mites. That means in the gram of dust, how many. Uh, what is the concentration or how much is the prevalence of the mites in that particular 1 gram of the dust that is what we call it as the quantitative analysis with quantitative analysis we can also go for the qualitative analysis also this technique is called as the flotation technique in case of this we take 1 gram of dust put kerosene in it and centrifuge for 10000 rpm for 2 minutes then put the supernatant on the filter paper this is the filter paper a plain simple, simple filter paper which is marked 1 uh, cm square put that supernatant over it again take the sediment of the same Put three to two five ratio of kerosene and CCL four and centrifuge it. Again, take the supernatant and put it on the uh, filter paper. Next, again, take the sediment and now one is three proportion of kerosene carbon uh, chloride and centrifuge it. Again. Filter it on the same filter paper. Next, again, last step again, sedimenting, but now in pure CCL four. Why we are going for all this method is that whatever the, no matter how light is the mite present in that one gram of dust, in all these steps, all the mites they will come to lie on these filter paper. Now, why we are going for square is that. we can easily count the number of mites in that particular square 
because we have see in one gram of how many of these mites are present so if you finish off this counting of the mites then you go to next then you go to the next cell only for that matter it is the the paper is marked like this now we come to the habitats of the mite you have different type of the habitats as we already told you we have soil mites are we taking in one mite from all these habitats in this lecture we have soil mite water mite we have forest mite invasive weed mite we have tree mite out of all the different mites have taken coconut mite then we have also ornamental or garden plant mites we have the mites on the hair follicle of the humus we actually get two next we have a feather mite we have the honey bees mite we have the snake mite also cattle mite pig mite mites present on the horse on dog cat mite cattle mite the main of course will be the poultry mites then mites on the flies also we have seen flower mite also i am going to show you and the mites that were captured using the air sampler because it is a part of the aerobiology we cannot ignore the using the flock air sampler out of this all also we have few mites which are yet to be identified so that also i have put it over here first of all the first one is the soil mite Now, soil mite. There are plenty of it, and as I told you, every day there is one or the other species which is still being discovered. There are about twenty thousand different identified types of the soil mite, and it is suspected about eighty thousand different types still still exist, and the discovery is continuously going on. The soil mites, as such, are beneficial as they perform the very important task, which is helpful in breaking down the organic matter. Such as leaf litter, we have fungus, also, and other naturally occurring substances present in the soil. However, out of all these mites, some of them are also predatory. Now, so, what will be the habitat? You get all the types of them, right from detritus, decomposers, prey and predator mite, and even the helpful mites. So here also, some of them are predatory mites, which eat extremely tiny and even microscopic. Harmful soil dwelling fauna, including bacteria's as well as the nematodes. The common soil mites are the oribatid mites, and they live for about seven years. The reproduction rate is also very slow. Next one is the water mite. Now again, water mite you have plenty of it. Now water mite. Depending upon where it is present, you have different type of the species. You get the fresh water mite, you get the marine water also, you get the intertidal mites also, you get it in the brackish water also. Now these mites, some of the mites, they live, they survive, they thrive in the intertidal zones also, and they are in big numbers also. Now some of these water mites, with the help of the chelicery. It prepare the oviposition site. Oviposition site means the place where it will it will be laying the eggs in the stem of the aquatic plants. So, with the help of the chelicery, it will make a hole or it will crash that particular area and it will lay the eggs in that hole of the stem of the plants of the aquatic plants. These are the mice that live in the intertidal zones. These are the mice that are parasitic on crabs. On seals, on sea otters, and even sea snakes. Here I have written only few of these. Otherwise, you name the organisms, and these mites are parasitic on uh, those uh, marine animals. Many thousands of species of mites are permanent residents in the water. They live in the water and accumulate in the tree holes of the uh, aquatic uh, plants. They are known to inhabit. The still and the running water also near freezing glaciers, melting melting water also you will be finding it. Even in the steaming hot springs, 
these mites are found. Now, even when they are in these habitats, the mites may be predators, it can be parasites, it can be herbivores also, fungivores also, and some show levitation behavior. Now, what exactly is the meaning of the levitation behavior? Levitation behavior is seen only in case of these mites, of uh, the mites that are uh, uh, aquatic. Now, what exactly is they do is that they make an air bubble in the mid gut, and then they lose their substratum wherever they are present, holding to the substratum. It can be any leaf, aquatic leaf or plant or stem or for that matter any other aquatic fauna, they leave it and because they have take, made an air in the mid cut, they tend to rise it or float on the surface of the water. This is what we call it as the levitation, levitation by the uh, water mite. Now how this is, how this air is formed in study, in one of the studies they found that this air bubble inside the gut, gut is the, uh, what we say, uh, intestinal part of the um, invertebrate animals, especially of this insect of Arthur. So how this air bubble is formed may be because of the agitation by the aqua aquatic mind. They agitate themselves in such a way that air bubble is formed and then they take it inside their mid -gut. And then they rise in, in the bottom. And the rising of this mind on the surface of water is very fast as compared to the crawling of the insects or by the mite itself. So this is what is called as levitation. Now in deeper studies, levitation was also found to be nil where you have the penetration of light is very less. That means they are sensitive to the light. So in the darker uh, area, in the darker water area, this levitation was not seen, but levitation was really seen where you have the uh, light areas or photo areas. Now this red velvet mite, actually this is the uh, red color, bright red color mite. Uh, uh, it is showing this uh, little darker because it is, uh, the photographs is taken and more of it is the preserved specimen. This is the exact forest mite found in the forest. Now as compared to the other mice, the jitne bhi humne mice dekhe hain, those are very minute in size, but this mite, which is the forest mite, especially this red velvet mite only, this is quite bigger in size and it measures from 1 to 1.4 centimeter in length, 1 centimeter to 1.3 to 4 centimeter in length. This mite is again 1 uh, centimeter in length and it is brightly colored, it is very very active. This mite we have taken from the forest of uh, a region uh, in North Maharashtra. They are large, bright color. We need not use any of the uh, microscope to uh, see this. The larvae of these are the parasites over the insects. They are great wanderers and have a very rapid movement and capture other insect eggs the other insects are including the spring teeth. Now the larvae of the red malvid mite is also called as sugar. For that matter, any of the larvae of all the mice is what we call is the sugar. The nymph and the adult. After this, I will tell you the life cycle also of it. The larvae is followed by the nymph and the adult stage. The nymph and the adult of this mite are predatory on small, smaller or arthropods. The larvae are the equipment parasites on the vertebrate animals also uh, present obviously in the forest region. The bites from these sugar are potentially much more dangerous as it is known to cause the diseases as it is a vector of many of the diseases called as the scrub typhus. Now if you happen to go in the forest the larvae of these uh, forest mites they happen to hello. I did not put him alive. He didn't mute yourself who's speaking. Next one, we have the mice on the invasive beads called as the russet mite. Now we all know that invasive are the plants 
they usually escape the cultivation and it becomes the agricultural pest. They infest the lawns, the agriculture field as weeds and they are responsible even to displace the native important plant species, thereby reducing the wildlife habitat and also altering the ecosystem processes. So it is important to study the potential towards the election and the effective operation of the basic plants to ensure the ecosystem functioning. So these are invasive weeds which we call it as a russet mite or we call it as thistle mite or Canada thistle mite. And it is a species of mite that belongs to family Aerophyte. These mites are found on the invasive weeds. Now we have three families which are, in, uh, which are on the plants and the other which is a predatory mice which is belonging to other uh, family. I am not reading out family to you know. So these can be studied and we can make use of these russet mites or the invasive plant weed mites so as to control these invasive uh, plants. That one here, we have a mite. We got it here in the party with the coconut uh, tree. Now, because of the presence of the mites on this coconut, it can destroy about 60% of the coconut production. The pechon nuts are infested, and these coconut nuts only the, the, the younger uh, stages of the coconut. And they are, they are injured by the mites, feeding in the portion covered by the perianth of the immature coconuts. Feeding damages can be severe when the population is very, very high. Now the growth of the nut will be very slow, it will be stunted, it will not grow also, and it may fall before maturity. The mite population can decline after six months. After six months, the damage is also declined. This means that the mites prefer feeding on the younger stages of the coconut than the mature coconut. The spread of the coconut mice can be very rapid due to their ability to produce a very high population with development from egg to adult within 10 days. And then as soon as it infests this coconut, uh, young coconut, they will leave this and then they will migrate to the other coconut plant in search of the uh, uh, coconut. The mite spread through the wind, allowing it to start a new population very easily. Next, this mite is seen on the ornament plants or the garden plants. This is what we call it as the red spider mite. You can see that it is looking like a spider, but it is not a spider. The name is because it spins they have a spinneret at the mouth part and they have a gland, they exude it and they form a silken uh, meshwork on the leaf surface. If you leave, if you lift the, uh, if you see the under surface of the leaf, you will find this red spider, uh, red spider mite. They are known to attack the crops, the first plant and also kill the other predatory mites. They are present on the under surface of the leaves. Now the presence of the mites will weaken the plants. It will make them susceptible to diseases and the other problems. Spider mites, if they reproduce very quickly, the, it is very fast and each female will lay a many number of eggs. Hundreds of eggs are laid by the female red spider mite. Spider mites, they have obviously piercing and sucking type of mouth part because it, it pierces into the leaf lamina or the petiole or the softer part of the plant and they will suck the plant juices. Extracting fluid from the leaf tissues. This results in the clusters of tiny white or yellow spots on the foliage. Leaves then can curl and become brown, it can even become dull. 
the photosynthesis may, may not take place and it is sometimes mistaken as a not stress and if you find this do not say this as a spider because it is totally different but the other spider mites next one this is interesting i have put two here together the first one over here this one is the demodex mite this is found in the follicle of the hair of the humans now here this is the electron micrograph this is the electron micrograph structure this is the hair of the human okay now this can be the eyelashes this can be the uh, hair on the face or cheek or chin or forehead or neck or even the back or even for that matter even the scalp now the place from where the hair grows is what is called as follicle this is the follicle and these all the clusters that you can see over here these are all the mites so they are so tiny they can you can see many of them clustering in the hair follicle of the humans now if we go and if you see this is the one demodex mite it is flat it is long worm like and the rate of reproduction is also very fast it is highly contagious and it spreads also fast and it can live in this hair follicle and also move from micro habitat of the uh, man now there are 64 65 no, known species or which two are known to live on the uh, humans the, this one is the demodex and the other you all know uh, scabies both the mites they refer to as the in the eyelashes mites or the eyelid is mites or even the skin mites the mites they get transferred between the host to the contact of the hair eyebrows and even the sebaceous gland present on the nose this next one is the magnesia mite these are the characteristic parasite found in the birds mites are blood sucking parasite this magnesia we are talking about and it causes a loss of blood causing anemia this is also the feather mice uh, they are highly specialized plumage uh, mites only found only in the region where you have the uh, feathers present and skin parasites that are variously now depending upon where on what part of the body of the body it is present they have accordingly uh, adapted themselves and you will find the other uh, depending upon how where it is present they have adapted to the micro habitat of the birds uh, body be it the neck region of the bird be it under the wings be it over the head or be it around the anal region or the anal feather region also you can find these uh, mites next one mite on honey bees why i have taken honey bees it, it is because we get revenue out of the honey and the wax and they are obviously the useful uh, insects in case of these honey bees also we get the mites they are parasitized by the mites this mite name is varroa which is an external parasitic mite and it attacks and feeds on the honey bees it attacks the worker bees obviously they cannot forage so the honey production and the wax production is also hampered we have we have uh, four species of the honey producing uh, honey bees out of which we have the apis mellifera and apis senna indica on which these varroa mites are present Apis mellifera is the European bee, and Apis serrana indica is the purely Asian bee or Indian uh, Indian bee. Now it is seen that Apis mellifera are susceptible to these mites. However, Apis serrana indica can sustain these mites if the colony is very weak. But if it is uh, highly infested, then uh, it causes damages to these. The varroa mite can reproduce only in the honey bee colony. it attaches to the body of the bee and weakens the bee by sucking the body fats of these adult worker bees now these mites they will lay the eggs in brood cells of the honey of the honey bees and it will hatch and it will match with that of the 
development of the larva of the honeybee itself these varroa mites it it is flat and it looks like a uh, button so these are the uh, varroa mites uh, i have forgot to tell you that whenever we are uh, mounting these specimens we always mount it the ventral side facing up because it is this ventral side by which we can recognize or which we can identify the type of the mite and the specimen can be identified by this so dorsal surface is facing downwards and the ventral surface is facing upward by which we identify the varroa lay the eggs on the larvae and it develops along with that of the host when the young bee emerges out from the cell this will also come out from the cell of this uh, honey bee and it will mingle with that of the population of adult workers the varroa mites also leave and spread to the other worker bees we all know that they are social insects so obviously these spread of these mites is the high present of this the uh, bee and these are the mites now mites as such when we have we, i'm showing you the uh, image where the mite is sitting on the back of this uh, uh, is not at all present on the dorsal surface they are always on the lateral side of the honey bee or on the under surface of the honey bee where you have the turga um, is not very hard on the lateral side as well as on the back side of the uh, honey bee because it has to suck in the fat from these honey bees so how come we are finding these mites on the dorsal surface is that whenever you find the varroa mites on the dorsal surface of the honey bee this means that they are ready to migrate from one worker bee to another worker bee so they are coming and perching or lying on the dorsal surface of the honey bee so that they can migrate to the other and of course it spread very fast the honey bee is being a social insect and obviously the honey production and the wax production will uh, and the revenue will be hampered next one we have a snake mite they are known to parasitize the snakes now why we have taken this test because we have many herpetology culture in our country where we take care of the red snakes or rare reptiles so here also the mite they parasitize the snakes or lizards or other reptiles the mites on the snake they look like a black or the reddish spots you can see this these are all the mites that is present now it comes to lie in the scales in between the scales of these snake this is a snake with he is holding and the spots it can also infest the head portion or the mouth portion of the bee just around the eyes also you will find this and moreover attaches themselves to the skin under the scales and feed on the blood and the fluid of these reptiles it uh, is responsible this is uh, the mite it is responsible to cause acariasis it causes severe itchiness and that is why you will find that some of the snake they undergo abnormal shedding of the scale which is called as dysplasia because it is having itchiness so it is taking out that it, it is taking out the skin surface which is abnormal shed of the skin and it the presence of the mite dust looks like what dandruff for dust on the skin skins some of the snakes will always soak themselves in water bowls which are kept to relieve itself from the itchy skin next one we have a cattle mite found in the cattle shed on this one is the bovine uh, mite cattle are infested with several species of mite which causes the skin disease called as mange and is that the this one is the bovis cap mite the adults what they do is they make tunnels in the skin of the cow a fellow of cattle and the larva that is present in the tunnels the eggs it will hatch in the tunnels of the skin of that cattle it will hatch into a larva 
and the larva will continue making burrows inside the skin of the uh, uh, of the cat. And continuous burrows will be made. The infestation, therefore, it spreads very fast. It is very rapid all over the body. In cattle, lesions usually first appear on the underside of the neck because it is a loose skin. There you will find the inner thighs of the cattle, the brisket region, that is the chest region of the cattle, and the tail head of the cattle. Diagnosis can be done by deep skin scrapings, and they are highly contagious form of mange, and it spreads very rapidly by direct transfers between the animals in the cattle shed uh, itself. Next one, we have a pig mite. Now, this pig mite, why we have taken it is because the pig mite is known to be migrating from the pig area, may not be even pig uh, shed, maybe any region where the pig are present, from there it migrates in our intramural house dust. And that is why it may be the cause of the allergens in these places where you have nearby pig shed or cattle shed or the presence of these hogs around. The mite is Sarcoptus scabby, but the variety is Swiss, which is a hog mite or pig mite. The lifespan of this is one hour, but at 60 degrees centigrade. Only one hour it will stay, but in humid condition, this will continue staying for about 10 days to 15 days. It is very small, it is very tiny, about 0.545 mm in length. They secrete the saliva, they secrete saliva which has a digestive enzyme that dissolves the tissues and whatever the tissues that get dissolved, it will feed upon that liquid tissue. They will, they will not suck the blood. They will only turn the tissues of the hog into liquid. Then it will feed upon it. Next one, we have horse mite and dog mite. This one is the horse mite. This one is the uh, dog mite. Horse mite, they are not at all vectors as seen in cases of the previous uh, mites, they are not at all the vectors or uh, any other pathogens. They do not transfer to any of the microbial disease. But the thing is that they cause damage to that of the uh, uh, livestock. Adult life uh, lasts for about 30 to 40 days. It takes about 8 days to reach the adult stage. And the female will lay about 50 to 100 eggs in her lifespan, which is about 30 to 40 days. It develops many, mainly in the areas where you have thick hair that is on the mane of the horse and the base of the tail. And it also affects the overall health of the animal. Next one we have, this is the cat mite. Now, this cat mite, you will not find, very rarely you will find it on the fur of the cat. This usually is present only in the ear of the cat. So, that is why the name is autodectus. It is the mite which is feeding on the ear wax and the other waste material or the debris that is present inside the cat's ear. And it lives in the skin of the ear tunnel or the air canal. It is very tiny. It is about 0.2 to 0.5 million and they do not survive off the host. If it falls, it, uh, then it will. Uh, uh, it is not able to survive longer and it itself will live for about two weeks. It will feed on the skin debris. It will also feed on the exudates which are produced as an allergic skin reaction to the presence of the mites itself or the mite saliva. So you, so, you will not find it in the uh, fur, but you will find it in the ear of the uh, cats. Next one, we have the tank mite or the aquatic uh, uh, or in the aquarium. These are, of course, the aquatic uh, 
uh, they are studied under the aquatic uh, mites only. They are very sensitive, uh, uh, highly polluted or the salty waters. And young mites are parasitic. They do not usually cause the death of the host, but it can damage the health of the fish and the others. If the if the population of the mites in the aquarium increases. Moreover, the question arises: Does the fish then cannot feed upon these mites? No, the fish they do not have the taste or the lightning towards these uh, fish uh, aquarium mites. Moreover, these mites they come to lie on the fish gills, and it will then suck the blood and uh, and the flesh of these uh, ornamental fish in the uh, aquarium. The fish itself will not die. However, the health of this may get deteriorate, and the population, if it increases, then obviously changing of the aquarium is the problem. Now, next we start for uh, with the uh, chicken mite or the poultry mite. This first mite, which is the Dermanesis alimi, this is the poultry mite or the chicken mite. It is a true chicken mite. It is a blood feeding ectoparasite. It is this the manisus is responsible for the economic losses in the poultry. It is a blood sucking and it feeds after every two to four days, mainly at night time, and stays on the body of the birds. It is a pathogen in egg layers. Egg layer, uh, poultry birds. It is broader at the base and it is light greyish in color. The macrosome is cylindrical and chelicery are very long and whip like. Single dorsal plate is present and it this is the ventral view so the dorsal plate is towards the dorsal region. It tapers chile and possesses a truncate posterior margin. Seeds are present on the plate which are smaller than the adjacent body seed. Single dorsal plate is present. Tarsi is not at all enlarged. It is an important pest of the chicken. The first pair of legs of the walking appendages is very long and it is always in the forward moving uh, direction. This is more of a sensitive organ than of the, uh, than for the than as a walking appendage. Next one we have the Metaphagoides tyrannicus. It is globular in shape. They are the real thousand mite. They are present. They are found in the dust of the poultry. It takes about thirty to thirty-five days to complete its life cycle. And the temperature is 25 degrees centigrade to about 85 percent humidity. All these figures that are present that we have written is in micron only, and we pay much importance on this because the species and the discovery or the new species or the identification all depends upon the length and the breadth and the size of. This one is over here is also a poultry dermatophagoidus. Uh, on it, just have found it in the use the uh, tilak sampler. This is again dermatophagus, it is a farinae. It is having again a large body, the first pair of legs which is expanded. The first pair of legs is directed forward and it is curved. You can see this curve over here. Now, here also the male and the female can be uh, distinguished. The male one, in case of all the mice, this third pair of leg is stronger. In, however, in case of the female, you will find that all these four pair of legs are usually of the same size and they are, uh, the third pair of and fourth pair is not uh, stronger as in case of the uh, male one. So, this is again the matter of the is uh, found in the bigger poultry. This is known as the stecta, again a poultry mite. It is reddish brown in color. The cuticle of the body is very smooth. It is reddish brown in color bigger in size as compared to the other one. It is round and dorsoventrally flattened. The gnathosoma over here 
is small with slightly longer pedipalpus present. This is the uh, pedipalp. Now this gnathosome, the, the character of this is that all this mouth part structure is present in the cavity over here, which we are calling it as a camerostome. And the dorsal margin of this spine, which is zero as the seta, is serrated. You will see the serration over here. In the next slide, if it is present, you will be to see. Moreover, the legs also, all the four pairs of legs, it is again present in the depression present in the idiosoma. And from this, these pair of legs are arising. The four pairs of legs are arising, which is zero uh, tecta. This is again a thicken uh, poultry mite, which is uh, chilatus. Commonly after pervanesis, it is a predatory mite. It is on an oblong in shape, the pedipalp. Now, this is the pedipalp. It is highly modified. This is not the tough leg, but this is the mouth part. And these are the four pairs of legs. You can see how highly modified this pedipalp is. It is so much that it is having the apical claws also, and it is very strong also and it oppose with each other the right and the left pedipalp they oppose with each other and it has as a grasping organ it is olympic in habitat and it is also found in the stored grain they might have migrated from the bird mite to the household uh, dust mite and even the stored mite this is in chilatus, but it is very, very small as compared to this chilatus, which is found in the dust mine. This is suspended in the air. Next one, Caloglyphus, again a chicken mite. All the mites that we have seen previously are usually present in the rainy season. However, this Caloglyphus mite is usually seen in the late rainy season. And in the early winters, this specimen can be seen. This stage is what is called the hypophilus stage. They are round. Now you can find here that the mouth parts, I suppose, are very small. And these are the legs. So the first and the second pair of legs are, are directed in front. And this one, this is the third and this is the fourth pair of legs. They are directed uh, backward. Nathosoma is very, very uh, small. Next one is Bloma tropicalis. Again, for this mite, the mite is round. The mouth parts are very, very reduced. All four pairs of legs are slender. The process seta, these are all process seta. Now, here also, this is the first pair of legs, second pair of legs. If you see very properly, this is the third pair of legs and this is the fourth pair of legs. This is not the seta. The rest of this is all. So, this pair of legs are also very, very slender, almost looking like the CT. So, you have a dorsal uh, CT. The dorsals are very slender. And about 15 pairs of CT are present uh, seen in the blown air Now, this is a very, very interesting mic. He found it in the floor, uh, wheat floor. We collected the wheat flour from the where the wheat is ground. Uh, the grinding or uh, the wheat flour grinding, just from the Arctic chakki We have taken the from this we have taken this mite which is acaraceum. It is very difficult to even pick up these mites because these mites usually are not so active. So even a slightest and it matches with that of the background of the flour. The white flower and wherever whenever you find the movement of that particular uh, flower dust you pick up this mite and you mount it on the uh, slide here you can very well see you have all the four pairs of legs the main identification is that they have 16 pairs of the dorsal ct all these ct are present and the ct are very very long and it is almost matching with the length of its own body. The legs are, this is the four, uh, third and fourth pair of 
it is uh, uh, reduced and the dorsal seta are very large and long so this might also migrates from this to as the house dust mite or in the storage mite now this one is the macrochilus or the uh, dipteran uh, fly which we found it in the as a contaminant in the drosophila culture uh, medium uh, medium bottle it is quite bigger in size as compared to the rest of the mite it is reddish brown in color it was uh, almost 1 mm in size like a pin head so very easy to pick up and uh, mount also the main over here over here is that they have very strong uh, legs four pairs of walking appendages this chelicere is chile you can see that it is end portion is cuticularized or we call it as chile we call it as pilus dentilus now here the claws are absent okay in case of all these the claws are absent in place of which you have a tuft of the ct you have a group of the ct that forms the end portion of this and over here you have a characteristic network like pattern over the anal plate this one is the male and this one is the female macrochilus i have not written the word musky domestic as the species name because we have taken it from the prosophila so this is again the very good specimen by diversity seen in case now we have found the similar mites using the tilak air sampler what tilak air sampler does is that whatever the suspended particles are there in the poultry shed or any other places it captures it so we found this chilatus we found the dermatophagoides very very tiny very small as compared to the rest of the mites up uh, there and then mount it over the uh, slide so we have found this next one from the tilak air sampler only i have yet to identify this mite which is unidentified uh, air sampler Nathosoma is very small, thin, pedipal, hygrosoma, prodosoma. Again, uh, out of this also, we have the other mites also. They are yet to be identified. It is not a Eurodiscus tecta, but this is yet to be identified. So we have you have one, two, three, and uh, this one also. Why we are not taking much ahead? Because the specimens found, quantitative analysis also is not much. Uh, mites are not found. That is why we have put it. I have. Still put it in un, in the unidentified mites from the poultry. Now, if you are interested, I will show you. So, this is the mite. Actually, this is the video which is showing uh, the feeding of the mite on the uh, fungus. I will just. so it is uh, this is the mite and uh, this is the uh, nymphal stage we call it as a trichotonym uh, to nymphal stage this is the mouth part and these are the three pairs of legs this is still a larval stage and it is feeding or you can see the bolus movement which is going inside the gut region here it goes inside there it goes it is feeding on the fungus of the uh, poultry dust
Okay, we go for the next one. The micrometry is also very important at least for identification of the species. So we have I have put here the Eurodesis tecta, the chilatus, the Acarasero itself, the chilatus, again the other chilatus. So we take the length and the breadth of also. We measure the legs also, the CT also. The if the chilatus is big enough like this, then we go for the. Uh, We go for the measurement of this. Uh, now this is the cross uh, filament. We can very well easily see even the legs and everything can be easily seen. So this is the bigger size, and this is the poultry mice, poultry cows. Now here, why I am showing you this? This is again the dermatophagus mite. If you see very properly, if you mount this, usually during the rainy season only, you can see this. This is the egg, which is this is the fecundative female carrying the eggs. You can see one, two, three eggs inside the body of this female, and you will find such type of specimen only during the rainy season, where the uh, reproduction very uh, fast. We will see it in other sites also. How is the Prevalence of the uh, mice. These are the eggs, hatched eggs. Now this is the life cycle. Of, uh, I have written the life the how it's from egg is into larva into the nymphal stages. It is smaller and then when it reaches the adult, you have all the different types. In the nymphal stages, if we cannot differentiate between the male and the female because the genitals are yet to develop only in the adult one we uh, we can find the differentiation next uh, one you have the protonym larva you have the larva stage then you have the protonymphal deuteronymphal and the tritonymphal stages and then uh, it will uh, become an uh, adult and it is reversible okay now you all might be using such type, uh, such type of uh, the uh, microscopes, or uh, for that matter, camera attached to the uh, uh, microscope. You have a software, you install it in the computer, and then you can take the photographs. You can take the video. You can capture as many photographs as you want, and you needn't even look into the uh, microscope. It, the whole image can be seen over. But of course. Everybody might be uh, knowing this. Next, why we go for this is that, sir, do we have time? I'll just finish it off uh, fast. We have the uh, why we go for the study of mice, especially the uh, ch uh, chicken mice or the house dust mite. It is because it is known to be an allergen. So dust mite allergy symptoms can be like from mild to very severe. It may include runny nose, itchy nose. Then, in case of the additional symptoms, it may you may be having chest pain, tightness, difficulty in breathing, wheezing, coughing, shortness of breath, or difficulty in uh, talking. Now, as I told you, this is the prevalence of mite during the months of the rainy season. That is from June, July, August, and September. This is September. This is the August month where you have the highest prevalence of the mite. The other months you will not find the mice. However, during the summer seasons also, we did find one or two mice, which is which is very rare. Again, in winter season, yellow uh, yellow was uh, seen. But if we want to go for the qualitative analysis, quantitative analysis, we usually finish it off during this season only. Then we get the uh, mites on the humans. The first was the dermatex, which is present in the follicle. This is on the skin, which is the scabies mite. So you get intense itching, especially at night. You have a pimple-like rash. You get the scales. You get the blisters. You get the uh, acne-like. Uh, this is the scabies mite, and the sores are caused by the itching. It is looking similar to that of. Now, Lakshigam means the younger stages of the mite and the scabies mite. This is the sugar mite and this is the 
scabies in it. Both are known to cause the uh, scabies in man. And this is the medical allergens. Now, whoever comes in contact with the poultry house or working with the, uh, with the poultry or even the veterinarians which are exposed to the hundred mice they have a potential clinical consequences. It can be domestic also and occupational hazard also. In minor categories, the workers and they do not visit the doctors because they are suffering from common cold, recurring cough is there, itching is also there, but they are not going to the doctors. But in but if it uh, it becomes a major category, that means it affects the overall health of the workers and also the activities of the workers. Then they visit the doctors for health conditions and then they uh, describe uh, they describe the uh, medications. The other health pa parameters include the cold, cough, itching of the exposed skin, skin lesions, itching of the eyes, asthma, breathlessness, inflammation of the nose, rhinitis, running of the nose, rhinorrhea, nose block, fever, chest pain, sputum, recurring sputum, watering of the eyes and uh, redness of the eyes. Okay, this is Dermanesis gallini and this is Dermatophagitis. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Yeah, questions please ask. This is thank you, madam. Thank you so much, Dr. Madam Veshali M. Mansoor, our resource person for tonight's event on presenting an informative talk on the topic of commonly found mites in ducks or poultry. Pam has wonderfully highlighted and explained about the morphological and physiological characteristics of different types of mites in pesting poultry and livestock animals. Thank you so much, ma'am, for enriching us with this valuable information. I absolutely loved to listen to your presentation and learn about the morphological features of these mites. This webinar is organized by the Department of Botany, SBM, Department of Botany, LGC, and Department of Zoology, Avinashilingam University. Those who want to ask questions to ma'am can ask it in the chat box. I will read it out or else you can also post your questions in the feedback form as well in the questions made provided. So any questions, I'll just read it out to ma'am. Thank yeah. you so much ma'am for your wonderful presentation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. So ma'am, let me check out this uh, chat box for any questions. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So much work is to be left because this was only the biodiversity. Now here, okay, which might infect the lychee plant and how we do have, I think we have the uh, um, uh, plant mite only, but then only uh, Anil Kumar is asking this question, only by looking at yes, the, uh, uh, by the looking at the mite and then going through it, we can determine what exactly or which is the uh, mite which is present on this uh, lychee plant. Because uh, on one lychee plant, we cannot say that only one single mite can be present. It, it can be any. So only by going through that particular uh, identification method, we can identify which mite in, is infecting the uh, lychee plant. But then it does uh, infect any any plant, any uh, soil also, it will infect. And there are known to migrate from the soil towards the uh, plant also. And moreover, I forgot to tell you that they have again one of the method by which they can reverse the sex also. So, at the nymphal stage itself, they can reverse into if they want to uh, become. The study is still going on and uh, obviously the population of the female mite is always higher than that of the uh, male mite. Thank you so much ma'am for answering this question. I hope uh, Mr. Anil Kumar, your uh, query is satisfied from ma'am's answer. 
So any more questions you can ask in the chat box or otherwise uh, you can also post your questions in the feedback form where a question tab is available. Okay. And uh, thank you so much ma'am for uh, yeah, being with us. Uh, it has been a very uh, like uh, good uh, yeah. event ma'am. Okay. Thank you so, so much. Thank you ma'am. Thank you so much ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so other information like some other announcements are also there. So for our international uh, uh, conference which is to be held uh, online uh, from 25th of uh, uh, November to 27th of November, the registration links are available in the group as well in the chat box you can see it. So participants, interested candidates can register for it and also uh, like you can send uh, full length uh, uh, articles for uh, publication in our UGC care journals and uh, books with ISBN number and uh, uh, the flyer for like uh, uh, book uh, topic is there in the um, group. So last date to apply is uh, 10th of October 2021. Kindly take a note of this. And also do not forget to register for the next webinar after filling today's feedback form. Okay, because this is a continuous process after you uh, like register and uh, successfully fill all the 10 uh, webinar feedback forms, you will be getting a certificate from this biodiversity um, series and NDF series. So kindly take a note of this after the after filling the uh, feedback form. Kindly also register for the next webinar, uh, which is uh, to be held on uh, next Saturday. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am. Also, I am now handing over the mic to our uh, organizer, uh, Dr. Uh, Das. So, so uh, sir. Thank you, Arnaba. So, uh, we, uh, we will con conclude here that uh, today's uh, webinar is over and go to the next webinar. And next webinar date is 11. And uh, our respected Madam Gayatri Madam brought me from Ovina Lisingham University will deliver the lecture on environment and development, uh, particularly organic farming. Please be with us. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.